And we are live. Thank you anybody who's tuning in right away for our three o'clock live stream. Today we're out here in Prairie Creek Redwoods State Park, a part of Redwood National and State Park. Thank you anyone who's joining. I'm gonna give just a moment here for anybody to trickle in and join our live stream. I already got our first viewers coming on. Thank you so much for joining. Just gonna give a minute to uh, let people trickle in and join the stream before we get started. Thanks so much for the love. If you guys can see uh, this fallen redwood here sitting over the creek, if you can hear my voice, uh, give me a little like or a little comment. Let me know that you're watching, that you can see me, that you can hear me. Well, you can't see me right now, but you can see what I'm looking at. And if you do enjoy these three o'clock live streams that we're doing every single day, make sure to share them. So that way your friends can watch, family can watch, anybody who you might want to share these with. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I'm coming out here so you can see me. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle. I am an interpreter for California State Parks. And today I'm out at Prairie Creek Redwood State Park, a part of Redwood State and National Park. Um, today I'm standing over the creek with some redwoods. I'm gonna talk a little bit about how redwoods can help save the planet. Um, really quick first, I wanna recognize um, that so many of us are sheltering in place due to COVID-19. Thank you guys all so much for doing your part to help flatten the curve of COVID-19 staying home, practicing social distancing, sanitizing things. I have sanitized all of my equipment. I will be avoiding anyone that may be coming down the trail, making sure to maintain at least six feet of distance, um, and trying to follow those guidelines as much as we can as well. Um, so why am I out here? Uh, we, we do these three o'clock live streams every day to try and give you guys a little bit of the parks you might be missing, to showcase some of the outdoor scenery, just show you how lovely it is, get a little bit of the parks into your home, um, and also to give you guys something to look forward to coming back to when you are able to return to the parks. So once again, my name is Kyle. Thank you guys so much for joining. I'm going to be talking about redwoods today. So you can see behind me, there is a massive uh, fallen redwood in this beautiful, beautiful day here at Prairie Creek. Um, this is a coastal redwood now with only about 4% of their range remaining. And you might be wondering, how does this tree help to save our planet? And the key is climate change. Um, and the key in climate change is carbon. So carbon is something we're all likely familiar with when we're talking about climate science, um, is emitted from our cars, is emitted when we're talking. I'm outletting a bunch of carbon right now. Um, this is one of the leading causes of uh, global warming is carbon getting into the atmosphere from a number of things we, different, number of things we do, um, factory production, all of that contributing car uh, carbon to our atmosphere. And now redwood trees, are absolutely massive trees. They can grow to be uh, about 400 feet tall. They can live to be almost 3,000 years old. They're massive and they're incredibly old trees. Now, if you were to take a look at one of these big trees, we know that there are three things that uh, plants need to grow, right? Uh, there's sunlight, there's water, and there's nutrients that come from the ground uh, and the air that these trees kind of eat up to build themselves. So we have uh, sunlight, water, and soil, essentially. There are a number of nutrients there. Um, they're absorbing some nutrients in the soil and some nutrients in the air. Now, of those three, let's say uh, air and soil are the same one, what do you think makes the majority of a mass of a redwood? The sunlight, nutrients they get from the sunlight, essentially, the, uh, they make their energy from sunlight, doing photosynthesis. Um, water, of course, so important for all living organisms, and soil and air to get a number of nutrients and chemical, essentially, a chemicals from the soil and from the air. So out of those three, the air, or, um, the sun, the water, and the dirt and the air, dirt and air being one, which one of those three do you think builds the majority of the mass of a redwood? What makes these trees so big? What are they built off of to make them so huge like this? I'm going to Hop over there so I can read the comments. My eyes aren't quite that good. See, looks good. Hi, hello, thank you guys for joining. So, of those three things, what do you think builds the majority of the mass of a redwood? The sunlight, the water, or the soil in the air? I'm betting all three, says Sandra. That's a good guess. Soil and air, water. Ah, lots of great answers coming in. Spectacular, you guys. Thank you so much for answering and taking your guess. 
Um, now, believe it or not, what builds up the majority of the mass of these redwoods is air. Sucking in the air around them is actually what they build the majority of their mass off of. And in that air, what really makes them big is the carbon. And take a look here. We've got some more guesses. Sunlight, water, all great guesses, you guys. Thanks so much for tuning in, giving your thoughts. I really appreciate it. So the carbon is what builds the majority of mass on these, um, on these plants. And they do something called carbon sequestering. This is a common term for a lot of plants. It essentially means that they're storing carbon. So, as I said, a redwood grows, a, you know, massive, up to around 400 feet, and they can live almost 4,000 years. These trees have been around in our fossil records since the time of dinosaurs. These trees have been on the planet uh, growing, sequestering carbon for thousands of years. These trees have been around. So all this while that they've existed, they're taking in carbon. Again, that's what builds the majority of the mass. That's what makes these trees so big, is the carbon. Now these trees can sequester more carbon than any other tree on the planet. These trees are the most efficient at sequestering carbon, storing it in their body um, throughout their entire lifetime. So as I said, these trees can live almost 4,000 years. That's an incredible long time, or almost 3,000 years, excuse me. It's an incredibly long time, and that's an estimate. We don't necessarily know, because there are so many of these trees. How do we keep track of all of them? Uh, and test every single one for their age. It's a lot, especially in dense redwood forests. Um, let me decide for myself. Sequestering carbon over the course of their whole lifetime. They live a really long time, right? And the whole time they're living, they're eating up this carbon, essentially sucking it in out of the atmosphere and storing it within their body. So when they once they absorb the carbon, they don't put it back out into the atmosphere until after they die. To breathe, they essentially do backwards of what we do. We breathe in oxygen and we breathe out CO2. Trees breathe in CO2, carbon dioxide, and they breathe out oxygen for us to breathe. Very helpful, very handy. Thank you, trees, we appreciate it. So they're producing oxygen for us and they're absorbing the carbon in the atmosphere. And they hold onto that carbon their entire lifespan until after they die. And that is part of the reason I'm standing at this tree right here. So this tree has fallen. It's dead. It's not growing anymore. It's not absorbing any new carbon. And when things die and decay, and uh, decomposers come along and eat them up, as they decay, they release the carbon that they've sequestered over their lifetime back into the world. So as these trees die and fall down, they're releasing carbon back into the atmosphere. It's going to peek real quick. We've got some more carbon, uh, some more comments coming in. Hi, Grandma Monkey. How you doing? Thanks for watching. So these trees are storing carbon over their entire lifetime, and once they die, they start to release that as they decay and decompose. But the really cool thing about redwood trees is that they are so massive that as they die, they provide for all kinds of new life to come and grow. So you can see this tree right next to me. It's fallen. It's dead. It's not growing anymore. But it has so many plants growing off of it, and all of those plants are benefiting directly off of the carbon that has been stored. So as this is releasing carbon, the new plants growing off of it are absorbing them. And in that way, redwoods can kind of be heroes of climate change. They're helping to save our planet by collecting this carbon throughout their entire lifetime. And then once they die, they're acting as what's called a nurse log. They're providing carbon and a growing medium for so many other plants. So I'm gonna take you guys a little closer to this log just to show you so how much life exists on here. So, I mean, you can see some of the bigger plants. We've got a number of ferns growing on here. I'm gonna flip you around real quick. We've got a number of ferns growing on this. Um, and this is a root wad here at the bottom where we've got all these ferns, just this massive clump of roots. And then this tree going across the water. And not only is it acting as a growing medium for all of these plants on top of it, but this is also creating habitat for anything that might be living in the water underneath. There's macro invertebrates that can be um, using um, the fallen branches and pieces of wood as a place to live, and it's creating deeper pools for salmon and things when they came up and spawn. Um, it's creating habitat for so much, not just plants, but animals too. Jim saying hello from Tennessee. Hi, Jim. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm hoping we can give you a little bit of the redwoods you might be missing. Thanks so much for taking a look. So I'm gonna come on down here, take a close look right here at this root wad at the base of this tree. 
So you've got ferns growing like crazy. Um, and most of these ferns are what's called sword fern. And then you've got also in here all of these mosses and lichen, other bryophytes, and tons of microscopic organisms I can't even start to keep track of. But just look at how much life is in just the root wad of this, not to mention how much is actually inside of this decaying wood, how many decomposers could be living in there, breaking this down right now. Absolutely beautiful. And Sandra, definitely a bridge for animals to cross as well, um, to get across the creek. Yes, allowing things to go back and forth without um, dipping into the water, be very helpful. Absolutely. So I want to thank you guys all so much for tuning in. I'm going to call it a little bit short today, but um, I'm going to hang out for another minute. If you do have any questions about this carbon sequestering, about redwoods and helping with climate change, um, I want to thank you guys all so much for joining and for tuning in. I'm wishing you all a very happy Earth Day. Um, if you're looking for some more content to eat up for Earth Day, the California State Parks Ports page or the California State Parks main page have Earth Day events going on all day. So if you search California State Parks on Facebook, there are tons of events going on off of... Um... Thank you, Teresa. Live streams are a great substitute. Uh, thank you very much. And there are tons of events going on on those other pages, tons of live streams. I just finished up a game show with all kinds of questions. Um, watching our interpreters either know it or not know it is pretty spectacular. Now, if you're looking for something to get involved in, we've just started here in the parks what's called the Parks in Your Home Challenge. So if you're at home and you want to try your hand at um, doing a little bit of interpretation, what I just did for you, take part in the Parks in Your Home Challenge. What this is asking you to do, essentially, is to find something in your home that you want to show and to create a one-minute video talking about anything you like. So if you were the park ranger and your house was the park, what would you want to talk about? What would you want to show people? Make those videos, tag two of your friends, and use the hashtag Parks in Your Home Challenge. If we really like what we see, we'll share your video out on our pages. Again, thank you guys all so much for tuning in. Uh, beautiful weather, giving the earth a drink, absolutely. Um, I think a rainy day out in the redwoods, there's nothing like it. Uh, with that, I'll take us for a little walk right along the water. If you guys do have any questions, go ahead and just pop them up on the screen. I'm happy to answer them for you. And again, thank you guys all so much for tuning in. Check out all the other live streams we have going on. Um, tune in every day at three for these live streams from the California State Parks, North Coast Redwoods. Check out the Parks in Your Home Challenge, and hopefully we can keep you nice and entertained and uh, maybe a little informed as well while you might be sheltering in place. Thank you guys all so much again for tuning in. You are appreciated, and you're awesome. Aaron, that is a spectacular question. How many inches of rain per year? I don't have the estimate um, off the top of my head right now, but um, we get some of the most rain out of any ecosystem. This is technically considered a rainforest. The redwood forest is considered a rainforest, and we do get tons of rain up here. I see Megan McVicar asking, any salmon in the beautiful pool? Uh, we do not have salmon coming up right now. This is Prairie Creek in Prairie Creek Redwood State Park. Um, and the salmon do come up this stream, although there aren't any that I've saw right now, but they may have swam by while I was talking. I don't know. I'll have to go back and look. All right, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. Aaron, uh, thank you for your question. I will look into it and comment back with the exact statistic. Um, that way you have it. But thank you guys all so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this little look at Prairie Creek in the rain um, and a little bit about how redwoods are helping to save the planet. Thank you guys all so much for tuning in. I appreciate you. Check us out every day at 3 o'clock for live streams from all kinds of parks up here on the North Coast. Um, thank you guys all so much for tuning in. We'll talk to you soon.